was at Clifftop Fiddler's Convention years ago, and there was a group of young people right across at their campsite, and they were playing that tune, and they were playing the wrong chords. And I walk over there, and I'm standing, and I'm listening to them, and I'm getting ready to correct them, and the guitar player looks at me and goes, it's your tune, isn't it? I said, yeah. He said, we don't like your chords. I went, okay. So, you know, it's the folk process. Once you put it out there, it's going wherever it's gonna go. Yeah, it's gonna be killer. It's a similar thing with the reeds. I see that the reeds has been repurposed. For me, the new life is more exciting than the old one, actually. You can't replace live music. For me, personally, you'll never take away that personal connection of it. Got the back blues, the back blues. Because that's how you really build a fan base. A lot of our friends are people that we solely met because we played a show somewhere. Started out, baby, I was shaking my head. Rolling my eyes at the things you said. Put your hand on my back and your finger on my lip. Before I know it, I'm shaking my hip, baby, shake. The more we can create spaces where people can not only consume music, but make music, that's just better for our communities. This area is so full of music lovers. It's a great place to be an artist. Part of what has fed my class of people who are interested in violin making is the richness of the music in this area. Just about everybody in the world who's trying to play old time music is trying to play Surrey County music. Almost all of my friends are old time musicians. <laughs> we'll get better, I swear we will. I'm gonna go home and practice. <laughs> we do have the talent. There's so much love for music, but we don't have an outlet for that, really. All we're missing is nothing to do with the musicians. There's no regular venue where you can go and hear great music through a great sound system on a regular basis. The downtown really needs help. A baker, a proofreader, a full-time mom, a high school English teacher, served on various boards and been involved in this community for many years now. 37, as a matter of fact. You're in Oak and I'm Pine. So this turned out to be the place where both of our children grew up and where our family has lived. You built the ships around. Elkin is only one school system, so all the kids get to know each other and all the parents get to know each other. We joke, you don't have any secrets because your local friends also see you in the liquor store, but... Uh, <laughs> right. Elkin is a little town that has all the sort of qualities that you think of when you think of small town America. It has a cute little downtown area. It has farmland nearby. It checks all the boxes for a quaint small town. This is, you know, tobacco country and was furniture and textile mill country. Economically, the landscape has changed radically over the last couple decades. 
Elkin went through a simultaneous issue of Chatham Manufacturing closing and the big box stores moving in. A lot of shops downtown that sold just basic goods closed. So I think a lot of us as kids were anxious to get out of Elkin and do other things. I know when I was growing up, I took piano lessons and I sang in the church choir, but there was a whole folk music scene that was just happening and there wasn't much crossover. Did you get that whiskey that I left in your backyard? I would kill him to see you bed, but another man got me, boy. that there are four-year-olds, five-year-olds who are picking up folk instruments and are really good at them. There is a boom going on. There are lots of festivals and musicians who are building on those traditions, who have the roots, now are branching out. There's an audience now that's available. Because of all these opportunities, more people coming into town, something needs to be happening at night. The first time I saw the reeds, it looked like a derelict building with the facade falling off. At the time, I was photographing abandoned structures in North Carolina, and as I was going through Elkin, I noticed the Reeves Theater, which didn't know the name of it, of course, but uh, photographed it back in, I think, 97. Never did I dream I would be in here working on it at that point. <laughs> It's the Rees was originally a movie theater that opened in 1941. Dr. Reeves was an eye doctor and thought, you know, I'm going to build a theater. That's what Elkin needed. It has really been a fixture for a long time, and I think everybody has fond memories. We took our kids to movies there. Because I know I went there and I saw The Lion King there. <laughs> Many folks have walked in and said, right over here is where I had my first kiss, and I met my wife right here, and they remember the life that it had. There's just a whole lot of attachment to the place. Late 80s, early 90s, multiplex cinemas are popping up all over, and small downtown cinemas struggled to pay the bills. The roof had started leaking and there was some major damage and it had to close. The first time I went in, I didn't really believe that it could be renovated. You know, it felt unhealthy to even be inside. So I think the, the demolition part of it probably scared most people away. It took a few years for another group to purchase the building, repair the roof, and stabilize the condition of the building. One of the most ardent supporters of the Reeves was Cicely McCulloch. It was on the chopping block to be torn down. To then create parking is what would happen. But it was kind of like, you have more parking for what? And that's just not me. I can't tear it. I wouldn't tear any old structure down if I could help it. And the goal was this pretty amazing arts center. I grew up in a small town. We'd had a lot of people come to us and say, oh, we want to help you raise some money. Nobody followed through like Sam Taylor did. I think as people, we want to better what we do. So as a town or city should be no different. Here's this young kid who says, I want to help raise some money and, and have a music event. First year of Reefstock was about 500 folks. It's been able to really grow very steadily and we don't see any reason why we're not gonna get close to 5,000 folks this year. We figured he'd do it once, then we figured he'd do it twice. He kept going knowing that the love of music was gonna continue to grow.
With a place like the Reeves, with a town like Elkin, you're just always going to be battling the fact that we are tiny. We're a tiny town. And so I think that their vision, while amazing, was probably not sustainable long term. I think the the love for it was there. People were giving money, but it was it was a, a dime and a, a bucket compared to what they need. We had done what we could with the Reeves and thought, now what do we do? How, what's going to happen now? And that's when we sort of panicked and said, no, we have to do something. Been sitting there like dead space, a drag on Elkin, just this heavy load, you know, for everybody who walked by and saw it just empty and dead. I don't think we would have done it if it hadn't been for Eric. It was his background in construction, but also his artistic sensibility and work as a creative kind of person. Debbie and I became friends and, and did a lot of work together as volunteers through the Arts Council. And one day she sat me down and said that her and Chris were thinking about opening a music venue and they really would like me to join them in this progress. That time I also heard that the nonprofit that owned the Reeves Theater was thinking about selling it. We took a deep breath and thought, <laughs> I don't know if we can jump off that cliff. And we said, really? Let's give you this and we'll sell it to you for our balance on a loan that we had. We want you to have it because we know you're going to take it and do great things with it. The same way I took private money and did what I was able to do here. She purchased the old Liberty Building, which was a tobacco warehouse and then a wholesale grocery, and now is Angry Troll Brewery and a very nice event space. And that was also a building that existed vacant for a long time. Many people had ideas of what could be done with it. Just take someone to push the first domino. We've been inspired by the energy that's come, the economic forces. I think the Yadkin Valley wine region, such an essential piece of building tourism. And then people who have built trails, that's becoming such a huge piece of what's happening around here. It's like, Everything is saying, okay, now it is time to really make Elkin a destination. It seemed that the time was right to go ahead and, and take a yep. leap. The stars of mine. The Reeves was, uh, at that point in time, pretty much a, a bare shell. Debbie and Chris both said, hey, this is a canvas, make of it what you will. We had an empty box and we could be free to do what we found visually appealing. We wanted something different than what you see on a daily basis in construction. We decided to let music inspire us in the interior and build a stage which has a side that resembles the side of a guitar. It can suggest several instruments, mm -hmm. really. But we have the original tile on the floor in the lobby. I think the primary thing that we will be able to restore is the Art Deco facade. To me, the fact that it's, it's original and it's something you just don't see anymore uh, is very important. Every little piece that is on the Reeves, Debbie and Chris did everything they can to source that stuff locally and find people around the community that had the skills to bring this back to life. We are not corporate, we're a small LLC with an in-house staff of construction workers that are all local fellows or transplants. Most of them are musicians. Several of the musicians have actually approached us to work on the project just to say they've had a part in it. Right, yeah, I've had my hands all over that place for the last year and a half. It's just interesting to see it progress. You know, there's so many curves there's like not a flat 
wall in the place, really, <laughs> except for the original brick. It doesn't have to be square. It's not supposed to be square. They're not cutting corners, but they're doing such a great job at maintaining the originality of that building and at the same time adding pretty modern stuff. There are similarities to the work. You're constructing something, you know, whether it's a stuccoed wall or a tiled wall or carving a piece of wood. I see a sense of pride in being part of the project. I don't know if we ever found a crew that could have done what we've done. Not that there aren't talented people, but just translating our vision into actual reality. I think we were the only ones that could do that. All of those people are now part of that project forever. Great sound is the most important thing. If I can uh, hear well on stage and hear the people around me without it being too loud, that's when I play the best. A lot of venues are just a room that they decided to throw a stage in and a sound system, but this is in a whole nother league from those. The actual ceiling above the stage, the angle of it, the texture of it is all designed for sound. Every little detail has been thought about for sound. I bring in the experience of having toured with the band professionally for 16 years. I hope that the musicians will confirm what we've tried to design, but when they play, they can hear themselves well, they can perform their best performance. They hear the power they have in the room. I was in that band, Don the Buffalo, for nine years, and I can probably count on one hand the venues that I thought were incredible and the sound man was great and the sound system was great. Once touring musicians realize what that space is, they're gonna to wanna to come there. Halfway through the project, there was a point where it seemed like we'd been working and working and working and we still had a long ways to go. And it felt like, uh, I don't know if we'll ever make it. My energy level was dwindling. There's five days of grinding bolts off the wall, and there's two days of fixing holes in the floor. You know, just the little things start adding up. say this is fiddling on the reef cedar? Yep. Okay. You just did. This is fiddling on top of the reef cedar. They're not freaking out. They're not second guessing themselves. They're just accepting that we are making something bigger than ourselves and that's going to take time and it's going to take energy and it's okay it'll happen when it happens Now we're kind of real close, feeling a little more accessible to finish it. It feels like sculpture. It feels like you're standing in the middle of a sculpture. And to see the reefs back exactly the way it was on the facade, pretty cool. Uh, the reefs to me is progress. And damn it, it's gonna be open now.
horizon Steaming moves Now I'm gonna run this lightning Now I'm gonna bring it to you I'm on this highway About to put the hammer down How is it possible to be this excited and this terrified at the same time? Terrified, but excited, yes. Yes, actually. Yeah. Yeehaw! <laughs> oh, Here comes that old night. The moon is on my back now. The moon's my only light. Time is riding shotgun. In my 42 foot. Alright, everybody got the Kodak ready? <laughs> One, two, three. Uh, about four years ago, we bought the theater. Um, while we were deliberating, this little voice in the back of all of our heads was saying, go ahead and do it. You can make it work. Go ahead. I later figured out that that was Sam Taylor's voice. <laughs> so Sam, in many ways, thank you. The stage is yours. For me, I guess, the Reeves is new. It's always been a dilapidated building, closed up, boarded up. So I think that it's an unveiling for me. It's a new music venue, which there's not too much more that gets me excited. This life's got me tied to a bullet chain. Oh, I'm getting ready, oh, I'm gonna break away. Right. Thank you so much, everybody. <laughs> Russell McCumber, folks. I don't think it's going to bother people that it's not a movie theater anymore. It's been a fixture for so long in this town. It's coming back to life, and that's what excites people. One to feel good, two to feel fine. Won't be feeling nothing when you run it three times. Spend all my money on fine red wine. Never spend a dime on it is such a huge labor of love <laughs> to restore an historic theater. It's, it's taken a big chunk of their lives to do this. It's, it's just going to be a center point for musicians in Elkin and beyond. It takes a lot to keep a Main Street going. So whether this is, you know, the, the tipping point that really turns Elkin, um, I hope so. We just need more building owners to make a difference. But because of the Reeves and hopefully because of the Liberty, people are gonna take that risk. Some people just see a pile of junk. They don't know that it's pieces. I think the coolest part will be to see the growth, because they'll have it. We're all in this as we push forward, and I think that that creates that community that we're all looking for. This is 
it's a good feeling. It's a you know new page, new chapter. Now it's just all uh, live music and selling beer. We'd like to think that we could leave something that would make Elkin a little richer because we've been embraced by Elkin. I don't know about 100 years, but I hope it'll be here for a long time. And, and I hope it will be because it's art. Because everybody is invested in the theater. You know, the town, the musicians, the people who work there, that will go on and on. And I hope that's the legacy. I mean this in the most uh, positive way. It doesn't feel like we're in Elkin right now. One day it will feel like we're in Elkin. I think other people think that's pretty damn cool. Take a freight train all the way down, all the way down. Back from where you came from, or where you got some, or who you are now. And what you get is what you got is or what you've had before. But hold on, darling, gloves are all white, don't you a big boy?